I'm so excited to share this tutorial with you. I think it will help you improve your art and compositions. In this tutorial, you'll need access to a website that allows you to download free stock images. Pexels is a great one for that, and we'll talk a little bit more about their licensing, as well as you'll need to be able to search on Google for different things, and of course, you're going to need Photoshop. So first off, we need to find an image. And artists or creatives have different ways that they like to create compositions. Sometimes people have something already in their head, but the way that I create compositions is by searching through imagery and finding an image that I like and then building upon it. Sometimes I like images that are really simple, such as this orange one here. Other times I like things that are a little bit more complex, such as this one over here. There are so many beautiful pictures on here to be able to choose from. And the idea here is to make sure that when you're doing this, you don't want it to look exactly like this picture. Unless, of course, maybe you're practicing, you're trying to learn facial features, color compositions, and you're using it as a way to learn. But if you're trying to create something unique and original, you want to be able to take this imagery and empower it with a bunch of different assets and pieces and parts to make it your own. And the way that I do things, I know a lot of other people don't, I often change the face. So when I paint or draw faces, they look like my work. They're very different. They don't look you know, hyper-realistic like these. Other painters love that, and they also can put their own spin on them. For me, I like to change the whole composition when I'm painting so that it's really not recognizable that I even used a stock image. So let's go to licensing here really quick, and let's look at Pexel's licensing. All photos and videos on Pexel are free to use. Attribution is not required, giving credit to the photograph, to the photographer, or Pexels is not necessary but appreciated. So if you wanna give credit back, that's really awesome. And my work looks so different that it wouldn't even matter. But if you're doing something that's more photorealistic, you might wanna give credit back because that's just nice to do. You can modify photos and videos, be creative and, creative and edit them however you like. So what's not allowed? Identifiable, identifiable people may not appear in bad light or in a bad way. So don't create offensive art with it. Don't sell altered videos or photos. And most of these other things here are not going to apply to you. So when you're using these stock images, you have the ability to do whatever you wish with them, which is really nice. So I usually start out by saying woman or female portrait. And for this tutorial, it's gonna be a shorter one, but on my Patreon, I'm gonna have a longer version of this where I share with you how to create a composition, how to then turn it into line art, and then how to transfer it onto your paper of choice. So let's go ahead and choose this picture of this young lady here. So we're gonna do a free download. We're downloading this image. I'm gonna replace it because I already had it on my desktop. We're gonna go ahead and open this in Photoshop. And first off, when we are in Photoshop, we want to decide what our canvas size is gonna be. What is our paper size going to be? So let's go ahead and say File, New. So let's go ahead and say eight by 10. This again depends on what you are doing. Maybe you're doing a nine by 12, maybe you're doing a five by seven. So you're gonna put your width here and your height here. You want the resolution to be 300, RBG is fine, and we're gonna go ahead and create. We're gonna grab this image over here. I'm gonna drag her into this, and I'm gonna say edit, free transform, and I'm gonna pull her to fit. And it's kind of funny because she basically was an eight by 10 anyway. So when you're looking at this image, it's important to find out what you do and you don't like about this image. 
So for example, I don't really like her hand here and I'd like to see what it would be like with her hand not being here. So I'm gonna grab this tool here called the eyedropper tool and I'm gonna pull a little bit of that blue. I'm gonna grab the paintbrush tool. I'm gonna add a new layer and I'm gonna start removing that hand. Other people will clone the background or do other things. And I just find this to be simple because it doesn't have to be perfect. And the other thing is if you find an image that is black and white, you can also use that as well. You'll just have to come up with your own color combination of what you want it to look like. Or even if you're doing this, you will want to come up with your you know, color combination of how you want it to be. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that hand. And I find that the angle of our body is a little weird. So I'm actually gonna move that hand back in because she's really leaning and if she didn't have her hand there, this pose would be odd without the hand. Sometimes you can move a hand or you might wanna remove one of the arms or you might wanna mimic one of the other arms because the other arm isn't exactly where you want it to be. There's so many ways that you can change a composition. So the other thing I'm not really liking is this sleeve here. So I'm going to move this down. And this can be done with the tool that I'm using or it can be done with the liquify tool. Everything doesn't have to be completely crisp as long as you're getting the idea. I'm gonna blur that out a little bit. And then the next step is, I find that this side is very dark. So we are going to go under the dodge tool. We're gonna grab mid-tones. I'm gonna make this very big. And I'm gonna lighten that a little bit. That's very hazy, so let's go ahead and light, do highlights and see how that works. Now I'm gonna go here to the burn tool, which is gonna make it darker, and I'm gonna go to the shadows, and I'm gonna say 12%, and I'm gonna go around the edge of her back there because I want to pop that out when we are doing line art in the future and I'm going to go back up here and make it a little bit bigger and so that pops her out and gives her an ability to you know see that back better than here right because it didn't really have a definitive line and here there's more of a definitive line so the next thing is is let's think about you know what we want to do and again, this is a simple tutorial. So let's start really simple and say, okay, let's put some flowers in her hair. Let's go ahead and go to Google here. And let's say, let's add some roses. And I will put rose, sometimes I'll put the word stock in it. Because usually when you put the word stock, it will be a cutout image. So stock photos are usually imagery that can be used for things like collage or other types of pro um, other types of projects. So let's grab this one. We're going to drag it to our desktop. I'm going to open this. We're going to open it in Photoshop. And so these files with the W uh, B W E B P don't all open automatically in Photoshop. So what you have to do is either A, right click, and you're gonna say other, and you're gonna open in Photoshop here like that. Or the other thing you can do if you wanna be lazy is I'll open it and then I will command shift, command shift four, and I'll screenshot it. Because once it's a screenshot, it opens up. Either way, it takes a hot minute to open it when they are those types of files. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. And remember when you are looking for imagery here, it's no big deal to 
grab a picture of a flower. Even if the flower has a copyright of a photographer, you're not going to be using their actual photo and taking it and claiming it as your own. You're going to be just using it as a reference, so it's no big deal at all. So let's go ahead and grab it in Photoshop. So Photoshop has this amazing new tool. I've been doing this since, you know, uh, 1998. I'm not going to age myself, but when there was very limited tools and you actually had to hand cut this out on your own. So if I grab this and I drag it on top of it, there's going to be a bunch of white and that's not going to be helpful. And years ago, you actually had to use uh, a tool to select all of this and go around with your hand and cut it out. But now the technology is so advanced that if you see this little bar here, I just say remove background and bam, it's gone. So we're going to use this to move it around. I'm going to say edit free transform and I'm going to make it smaller. I can go to the side here and twist it to make it how I want it to be. And I think that looks good. So let's go back here and let's look to see if there's other um, roses that are in different positions. So when I'm making the composition, this makes sense that it would be going this way, but perhaps this one's gonna be facing to the right. So we're gonna go back down to Chrome here and we're gonna see, and maybe we don't just want a rose, we want a pink. So you don't want everything to be exactly the same. So it's nice to have pink and red and different colors or different uh, hues of a color to use. And let's see here. So here's a good example of a Getty image photo. Okay, the credit is Rosemary Calvert. We're gonna grab it, we're gonna open it, it's a JPEG. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this image. I'm gonna drag it over here. I'm gonna again remove the background. And the fact that it says Getty Images on there is not a big deal because you're not, again, you're not going to be using it. You're not going to be claiming this as your own photograph. So if there's copyrights over things, this is a good example, nothing to worry about at all. You're going to be creating this as your own composition. You're going to be painting it your own way. And Getty Images isn't going to come and go like that rose on your artwork is you know our rose so let me give you a good example of what i mean so let's go to my website really quickly and let's go under my painting portfolio and let's look at this uh, this artwork for example so these flowers are stock images some of them were considered copywritten images by, for example, like a Getty image. And you would never know because I did it in my own style. And even if I did it almost exactly the same, again, it is a piece and part of a whole that you're creating in composition. So I just want you to be not worried that it's a, it's a big deal at all. You can use anything you want when you're creating a composition and you're going to be turning it into a painting because truly, there's nothing to worry about, which is lovely. So let's go ahead and look in here for some plants. And on my other computer, I have a ton of things that I've saved. So if you are going through the internet and you are finding images and flowers that you like, you can always save them and use them over and over again. You paint them different every time and no one's gonna know the difference, you know, unless they're, you know, very specific and, you know, you don't wanna, look like you're repeating things, but let's look in here to see if there's anything interesting that we might want to use in her hair. I know this is a pothos, but sometimes I'm like, would that be cool? So we're gonna place it, we're gonna remove the background. We're gonna go ahead and free transform that. And let's put that behind that. 
The other thing that you can do if it's kind of splotchy and you don't like it and you just need the lines, you can go image, adjust, and you can go threshold and move it all the way here and this will give it give it to you completely black with the outlines and sometimes that's something I like to do too. So I think that looks pretty cool. Again, another pothos. How funny. So let's go ahead and place it and remove the background again. Image, adjust, threshold. Oh, let's do... Gotta rasterize the layer. Image, adjust, desaturate. Image, adjust, threshold. So that didn't work out. We don't like that. It looks messy. Yuck. All right, so let's go to the internet and let's look for some leaves stock. Leaves stock. So they got individual leaves. This one's kind of fun. So let's go ahead and grab that and drag it over here. Let's open Photoshop again. And let's go ahead and place it. Let's remove the background. And that looks nice, right? So since it's cut out really well, I'll leave it as it is. And then I think we need one more flower for here. And actually, I think I'm gonna get rid of her bun. So let's go back in and sample that color by her hair. Let's add a new layer and grab that brush tool. And let's just get rid of it. Because we'll put a flower there and then that will look better. So let's say rose, stock, yellow. And also remember when you're picking up things and you're putting it in your composition, you don't have to keep them the same color. Like if this rose is red and this is pink, you can paint them purple if you want. You can also change the colors of them. So let's go ahead and grab layer three and go image, adjust, and let's go to hue and saturation and we can change the color of the flower to whatever color we want it to be. So that's also fun. So we're needing something that's kind of sticking up rather than sticking out. So let's try to find something that works. Sometimes I'll take you to weird sites. That one's kind of interesting. Mm. Sometimes I'll move it down and I'll look and I'm like, oh, that's kind of fun. All right, I kind of like this one better. So I'm gonna grab that and drag it to my desktop. Sometimes it won't let you on these sites, right? They want you to sign up for a free trial. And the thing is, is it, I'm just gonna come in here. Ah, hold on. I'm going to, all right, I'm gonna screenshot it and then I'm gonna grab it and drag it in here. So we're going to remove background again. I'm gonna grab it and plop it on top of her head, which looks really good. So we're gonna combine those two. And I'm just curious about adding another type of background to her. So again, this is all trial and error. So let me remove the background around her. Don't worry about this stuff. You can paint it back in. So subtract and add to mask. So if you want to say add to mask, you come in and you can add it back. And if you want to subtract from mask, it would erase it. So we would say subtract from mask and probably go backwards because it did cut out around her face well. Oops. And let's go back 
and add it back right there because we just want to see what's happening. Okay, let's subtract the mask and make a little teeny tiny brush here. And when you're doing this, you know, you want to take, you want to take time. You don't want to rush it but for this tutorial. I'm not being a hundred percent precise here. And I cut off a bit of her shoulder. There we go. And obviously that cut in her, into her sleeve is not going to be rounded like that. So I'll make it super tiny and make it more pointed. Right. And obviously round the stuff out. It really depends on what you're going to put on the back of it. I do get rid of the wispy hairs here because I'll, I'll create those on my own. don't want to lose her ear and so now you have her completely cut out let's go ahead and go under filter liquify oops it wants to liquify the outline let's go back to her filter liquify and I'm going to grab this tool here and I'm just going to change the shape of her chin a hair so this is the liquify tool. I'm going to move this a little bit here. I'm going to give her a tiny bit of a bigger jawline and not such a pointy chin, which I like a lot better. And I'm going to change her nose a hair here. The contouring with the makeup, I think looked a little strange. So I'm just going to, make her nose look more in a shape that I prefer. Nothing wrong with her nose. And these eyebrows are a little intense. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to make them a little thinner. So here you can change a lot of things, whatever you want to do to, to shift a face. Sometimes I'll bring a hairline down, for example. Sometimes I feel like the hairline is a little too high, so I'll bring the hair down just a tad. Maybe bring the, you know, the ear in a little bit. Okay, make it just a tiny bit smaller. Let's say okay. Let's go back and we're going to go back to add to mask. And we're going to make sure her face is in there. Sometimes we have to zoom in. We want to subtract from mask. And in the brush, sometimes I'll change the hardness. That means when you're changing it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't do a hard line. And then like you can see, it's kind of fuzzy. And other times I use the complete hardness and go from there. It's great to use a Wacom to do this so that you you can uh, do it easier. It's kind of hard to do with a mouse, but sometimes I just don't feel the desire to set my Wacom up. And let's grab her neck a little bit there. So we wanted to thin thin that out, right? Thin that out a little bit. Get rid of some of that extra stuff. Ah. And there we go. So now she's on a completely white background. So let's go ahead and Google mountain range blue. And here there's just a ton of images. Let's maybe grab this image here. And 
make it bigger. And now we're gonna put it behind her, not, not duplicate it, and put it behind her, drop it below. And now she has an interesting background here. So we can add little tiny other things. We can add other, you know, if we want to add more flowers or maybe want to put a moon in the sky or whatever the case may be, this is just a really simple composition to put together. Let's go ahead and grab, let's grab a little crescent moon stock. So let's grab a little teeny tiny crescent moon here. And let's put this here. And we are going to remove the background. And we're actually going to go image, adjust, invert. Oh, okay. So why don't we do that first? We'll do image, adjust, invert, and then we'll remove the background. There we go. So now you got a little teeny tiny moon here and you don't have to stick with exactly what you came up with. Maybe you're like, mm, I don't really like that very much. Or maybe you wanted something a little bit more warm. So maybe mountain, mountain range pink. So something more, a little bit more, let's say interesting. And remember, you can change the colors of whatever you're painting. So let's see. Let's go to Pexels to see if they have anything. Let's see what they got for a mountain range. Ooh, they got some beautiful stuff. Nice. This one's really nice. That one's pretty. And think about when you're doing this, like, what do you like to paint? What can you paint? And that will also help you. Like, do you want it to be, you know, uh, dark or do you want it to be light? You want the background to be dark. You can grab this in here and bring her into a night sky if you wanted. Oops, let's not grab her. You know, if you wanted to just do that, you could do that. Obviously, there's lights of buildings back here. You can always remove them. Let's see what else we got. I kind of like her on the back, yeah, on the on the dark, on the back. <laughs> I like her. I like her in the dark. So, what about um, night sky? That's just gonna give me sky with a, not much going on. I think some of these are beautiful. What about a castle? Do they have a castle? Well, that's super fun. So you could always grab something like a castle. You can bring it in here. Let's go ahead and remove the knight. Let's bring this castle to the front. Let's go ahead and remove the background. And I'm gonna add to the mask the ground here that's missing. So, you know, if we wanted to add that back, for example, that's how far does it go? Okay. And then subtract from mask. Oops. Now we can go ahead and take this free transform it. And we can always add it, you know, up here. Let's put it back behind her and let's go ahead and remove the night and the blue. So what could we do to create that landscape here? So I mean, we could even go as far as this one and not even cut it out. So we could go here and we could grab that. And it just changes the feeling of it. In the night, it had a feeling. In the, you know, 
this has a very renaissance -y feeling. So that's all sorts of fun. And now as you add new things to the composition, you might want to remove things. So I don't like this green leaf here now, these green leaves. So I'm going to free transform it and I'm going to bring it over here because it makes more sense. And then where is that little teeny tiny moon? Okay, there's the moon. And if you want to name your layers so it's easier to see, that's always helpful because sometimes they're hard to hard to tell what they are. So let's bring, oops, I don't need to bring all of it. Let's just bring this one above there. And now I can add this moon back into here. And we have a very interesting composition. So I'm going to screenshot that and save it. And if you're ready to be done, you would basically just say filed save as, and you'll want to save it as a PSD file. So we'll just say woman flowers right now. And the PSD is going to be the editable file. Meaning when you open it, you can come back and all this is going to be here and you can move it around. Or, you know, you can also save it as, which we're going to do, as a JPEG. And I just remove the word copy because it's not going to be a duplicate because it's a JPEG. And you save it. So that is how to create a really simple composition. If you want to go further with this and create a composition, learn how to turn it into line art, and learn how to transfer it onto your paper or substrate, then join me on Patreon. I will have a video for that available there as well, and I'll make sure that I link it down below. I hope that this was helpful. Thank you so much for being with me today. If there's anything you guys want to learn or that you'd like to see me share, please make sure you comment down below. Also, make sure you like and subscribe and join me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in another video.